out driving around the ranch one afternoon with a buddy of mine when I came upon this scene. You just never know what you'll run into in the Rio Grande brush country. So I grabbed my camera, jump out of the truck, and uh, move up pretty close to set up and film. And, uh, granted, at a very safe distance. And looking around, I could see that there's all kinds of wildlife checking this out. If you look in the background, you can see a buck there. I, I don't know if he's watching the snakes or me, but he seems intrigued. And there's also some javelinas in the scene. To me, it looks like the snakes are about to make their escape, and I assume it's soon going to be all over. <laughs> Look, if you're watching the background, you'll see another buck jump on the fence here. Yeah, there he goes. So anyhow, I know that if those snakes make it over into the grass, they're going to be safe. I'm not going up in there to film them. It's a mid-January day right here, probably 65, maybe 70 degrees. I want you to think about that, all you quail hunters, the next time you're out running through the grass uh, that's knee-high chasing, chasing birds. I, I don't think I want to do that. I have no idea how long this scene's been going on before we show up, but uh, after a while I believe that it's safe enough to get a little closer, so here I'm set up at about 10 yards. Now, I'm all intrigued with this video and I'm hunkered down over the camera pretty tight watching it when I glance back over my shoulder and I realize my buddy's still back at the truck, uh, it's probably 50 yards away, and he's filming with his iPhone. I doubt that's a very high quality video, so I tell him I'm trying to coax him to come in a little closer and with all the coaxing I can do, he never got closer than about 30 yards. But it just seemed to me like the snakes were far more involved with each other than uh, concerned about me and seemed pretty safe. Now, I've spent a good portion of my life outdoors and in the brush country, and I've seen plenty of snakes of all kinds. But this is the first time I've ever seen this. As you can tell, these are diamondback rattlesnakes, and they're quite large. If you listen closely to this video, you can actually hear them make a loud thumping sound as they hit the ground when one body slams the other. I'd be very curious to know how much they weigh. You can also see one snake's a bit fatter with a little bit bigger head than the other snake. Based on this, and uh, without knowing anything about this kind of a scene right here, I assume when we saw this that it was a male-female courting dance. It's not till I got home and did some research that I learned it's something called rattlesnake combat. Well, if you watch what's going on here, I think that's a pretty good name for it. Rattlesnake combat. Apparently, whoever wins gets breeding rights, especially if there's a female nearby. Now, that never occurred to me while I'm doing this video. As I said, I'm only about 10 yards away right here. And a female nearby. Hmm. Well, I'll be a little bit more careful next time. It's kind of uh, intimidating to think that there might have been a female just a few yards away from me, curled up in the brush, waiting to see which one of these was going to be her suitor. Apparently, whichever snake is the loser has an actual physiological response that causes a rise in stress hormones, causing it to seek refuge and lose interest in breeding. That's kind of fascinating. Sort of like people, I suppose, too. I can't help but wonder if the loser might cop a little bit of an attitude. This may explain why some snakes are a bit more aggressive than others, perhaps. There's both eastern and western diamondback rattlesnakes, apparently differentiated by the territory they live in. I'm taking this video near the Rio Grande River, where it runs through deep south Texas and northern Mexico. Thus, I assume that the snakes that we're looking at here are western diamondback rattlers. While the eastern is considered to be slightly larger, neither are known to be more than seven feet long. And in my research, I didn't find any western diamondback rattler proven bigger than seven feet. That said, these two sure look like they've got to be at least six feet to me. Now, I didn't stretch them out and take a tape measure to see exactly how long they are, but uh, yeah, they're big enough. It's also said that a rattlesnake can live 15 to 20 years and go up to two years without eating. I don't think either of these two guys have gone two years without eating as fat as they are. I don't think they've missed any meals at all. 
We all know that rattlesnakes are known for the rattles on the end of their body. They can vibrate these rattles from 20 to up to 100 times a second, making the characteristic buzz that they're so famous for. If you've ever been walking through the woods and heard a rattlesnake rattle, it doesn't take an expert to figure out exactly what it is, and you know two things, danger and get out of the way. Now, as we watch these snakes here, we're about to come to the end of this clip, a most unusual thing happens. I had walked back to my truck, put my camera up, and turned around and looked, and much to my surprise, this is what I saw. So I grabbed my camera and come back. As soon as we got out of the way, this doe was very curious about what had been going on. She had been back in the brush. We didn't even know she was there. And up she walks to check the scene out. How cool is that? Yep, off we go.